Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So Heroes of Mandalore is the kickoff of Season 4 of Star Wars Rebels and it is the last time that we see Sabine Wren wielding the Darksaber because by the end of the two episode season kickoff, she has passed the Darksaber on to Bo-Katan. Now there is a part earlier in the story where... Sabine meets Bo-Katan and there's reason for her to realize, oh, Bo-Katan is considered by many to be the person who's supposed to be leading Mandalore because she had been appointed regent of Mandalore by the Jedi at the end of the Clone Wars, tying back to season seven, right? And so Sabine tries to give her the Darksaber right away and Bo-Katan refuses and says, yeah, that didn't go so well the last time I had it. And as an aside, it didn't exactly go well the next time she had it. So now she's got it again at the end of season three of The Mandalorian, so maybe the third time's a charm. But back to Sabine, we see her fighting with the Darksaber at various points in the story, and there really isn't anything addressed in the episode overtly about, you know, force abilities and wielding the Darksaber in that regard. And yeah, nobody says anything about whether Bo-Katan needed to have had any force abilities in order to wield the Darksaber. It's just considered the Excalibur of Mandalore for all intents and purposes. Sabine has come to be proficient with the Darksaber, certainly, and this isn't necessarily the most recent time we've seen her in Star Wars Rebel storytelling, like we dropped her off at the end of episode 16, but she shows up in the finale to help the Rebels escape from Chopper Base when Thrawn's bombarding it. But there's nothing there at the end of season three or the start of season four that really weighs in with any consequence on the question of whether she is force sensitive. So I did a little extra digging and one of the things that comes up in Wikipedia when you look up force-related abilities is the idea of force attunement, which is currently still listed in Legends stuff. The idea of force attunement suggests that you can be aware of the force in a heightened manner, but not necessarily able to use it, to wield it, to manipulate it, to basically <laughs> do what the path of the open hand says is the worst thing in the universe, right? And I guess in that case, then the idea of a force attunement might have been reintroduced into the canon by the path of the open hand in High Republic storytelling. Their awareness of the force and if they were attuned to it potentially then that was fine but if they were actually using it well that was another thing entirely. Although I think the path might have been <laughs> perfectly happy killing force attuned people as well as force sensitive people. I guess it's just a question of whether the nameless and the leveler would be able to feed on force-attuned people as well as force-sensitive people or not. That's another fascinating question to pursue potentially. And the idea of being attuned or lightly sensitive, if you will, to the Force has shown up in canon storytelling. One of the most recent examples is in the final uh, Crimson Dawn trilogy series of comics by Charles Sewell, where Kira finds this person, Madeline's son, who had been a Sava, they call them, so like a scholar and a professor at a university, was doing research on various Force-related artifacts before she was sacked when the Republic fell and the Empire rose. And it was this sensitivity that led her into her chosen field, researching Force-related artifacts, particularly dark side related artifacts, and Kira actually sent her on a mission to see whether Master Yoda had survived the Great Purge and Order 66, which is a story for another time to explore. Now there's one other thing that I want to also bring up from Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian when Ahsoka talks about Grogu and that it might have been letter, uh, better to let his abilities fade. So and it does make one wonder whether there was a time that Sabine Wren had been sensitive in the Force and that her abilities had faded over time. And what happens at that point? Do you just lapse into an attunement, a light sensitivity, if you will? I think that is probably the most logical place that we arrive at for the answer to the question of whether Sabine is force sensitive or has any force abilities whatsoever. It seems like there is something absolutely there. There must have been something there. And what we're going to find out in the Ahsoka series is that Ahsoka sensed it somehow and offered Sabine the opportunity to bring it out in her. It would have been dangerous for that ability to have been discovered on Mandalore when she was growing up. 
and any trauma that she experienced growing up and then as a teenager developing weapons and seeing them used against her own people yeah that could also be blocking any potential connection to the force that she might have established as well so yeah there's a lot of things that could have seen it fade away be suppressed or locked down and we're actually going to see an opportunity for it to be brought out in the ahsoka series so that's what I've got for you on the question of whether Sabine is force sensitive and that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.